Hello there. So before we get started with today's video, there's a couple of things that I wanted to mention. The point of this video isn't to teach you JavaScript, and there's a couple of JavaScript concepts that I'll be using, but that I'll be providing references to in the description. For example, I'll be using the Fetch API, and if you don't know what that is, if you don't know promises, now you really have to understand um, specifically all about promises, but I don't know, if you want to know more or if you want to learn the Fetch API before getting into this video, make sure to check out uh, Mozilla Web Docs. They're amazing and they go into a lot of detail um, into the Fetch API. Okay. Now, second point is that for this video, we're going to have a bunch of setup required. I decided not to make a setup video previous to this one just because I feel like it would be kind of annoying but I've made a whole setup document that you can follow. Hopefully it's descriptive enough and you can get your WASM workflow set up just perfectly. If, there, if you'd like me to make a JavaScript for WebAssembly video or an actual setup video, that, that's also fine for me. Just let me know in the comments down below and I'll see what I can do. Okay, now let's get into the video. Before we get started with using the WebAssembly API, uh, we have to first export this function that we made in the previous video. So just a, uh, a little bit more syntax before we get into the nice stuff. You just do export, as usual with the S expression, and export, and just for convenience, I'm gonna give this function a name. I'm gonna call it um, add, because well, we're adding two numbers. And then I'm going to export add, and I'm going to say func add. So just to explain what's happening here, um, I'm exporting a function, and I'm going to call it add. But this add here is what JavaScript will call it. Okay, so what we're doing with exporting is we'll allow JavaScript to call our soon-to-be-converted-to-wasm functions. Okay, and here I'm just calling add. Similarly, I could refer to it by index. Okay. So once again, JavaScript, and this is the one in dot what. Okay. Okay, I just noticed I made a mistake in the previous two videos in terms of a keyword that I want to fix now. Instead of return, I should have written the keyword result. I added in the description of those videos a note saying that uh, that was incorrect. And so, yeah, sorry about that. Let's get back to the video. Okay, having fixed that, and assuming that you've downloaded Wabbit, um, we can get into using the WebAssembly API. Let's go to our terminal, and right now in your path, you, have, you should have access to the following command, what to wasm. And using this, we'll pass into as a parameter our uh, dot what file, and this, if you don't have any errors in your syntax, should output a .wasm file. Okay, your Visual Studio Code is not going to be able to see this, but it's pretty much just a bunch of uh, binary, which I can show you later if you'd like. But now that we have this, we can finally start using some JavaScript. Um, let's call this JS API as well, but we'll give it a .js. And I'll code it real quick, and then I'll go over uh, the code with you. Okay, so assuming that you've also done your homework in Fetch API, right here, what I'm doing is I'm fetching the .wasm file, which will be made available in a Python simple HTTP server. Um, we're getting this response, and we're passing into an array buffer, which uh, in some other languages is called a byte array. It's just going to store all the bytes that we get from .wasm, which we can't really view here, but a bunch of bytes. Uh, with these bytes, we'll then instantiate them, right now using the WebAssembly API, and we'll get this response. Now this response will have uh, 
all of our exports. So as I mentioned here, we exported a function called add. And so we can call it, just like we use, like we would any normal function. Right now, we're here, I'm passing in add one and two. And then in the console, we should see a result of three. All right, our last step now is to make an HTML file to display this all in the browser. And I'm just gonna make something really simple, uh, nothing too elaborate because once again, this is an HTML course, but regardless, I'll be putting an HTML uh, reference for you in the, in the description. So I'll just to do this real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Important things to note is just that I'm calling um, the JS API dot JS here. Um, the script is what's gonna well, pretty much do all the work. The rest is just fanciness. So let's go to our terminal. And once again, assuming you've downloaded Python, you should be able to do something like this. Python 3 um, hyphen M HTTP dot server. Or if you're in Windows, you can do pi uh, hyphen m HTTP server. Mm. Running this, it will start serving in this port. You can just copy this, go to your browser, and search. Now it tells us open console to see results, which is the message that I put. And now in Mac, the way that you open your developer console is you do option command J. And you can see here we get three. All right, so in some browsers, uh, in other browsers it's different, but you can just figure that out. And you can see that if I were to go here and change this, so I were to make, I don't know, whatever, one, two, three, four, three, and I came back here and I reloaded the page, you see that it updates, okay? So yeah, and this opens doors to do a lot more stuff in the future which hopefully you'll follow along to see. Awesome, thank you. I'll see you next time.